Let's learn about the basic characteristics, operating structure, and main parameters of op amps and comparators. Op amp is an abbreviation for operational amplifier and is called an operational amplifier. In other words, it is an amplifier used to operate on input signals to obtain the desired output signals. It is called an operational amplifier because it can perform various analog operations or signal processing such as addition, subtraction, multiplication, and various filters. In the past, these operational functions were implemented using transistors, but the design was too complex and difficult, so the operational amplifier was created. The op amp has a large input resistance, small output resistance, and a very large open loop gain. And is a differential amplifier that amplifies the voltage difference between the plus and minus input terminals. It is composed of five basic terminals a plus input terminal, a minus input terminal, a plus power terminal, a minus power terminal, and an output terminal. A comparator, like an op amp, consists of five terminals and is a device that compares the input voltages of the plus and minus input terminals to determine which one is higher and outputs low or high. The op amp can be used for inverting or non-inverting amplification, calculation between two input signals, various types of filtering, and as an oscillator. The most basic use is that it can be designed by defining arbitrary gain or polarity for each analog signal of the two input terminals, so it is called an operational amplifier. A comparator fixes the voltage of one input terminal as a reference terminal, compares this reference voltage with the voltage value input to the other terminal, and performs the function of outputting high or low. Let's learn about the internal circuit configuration of op amps and comparators. It is generally composed of three stages, an input stage, an amplifier, i.e. gain stage, and an output stage. The input stage consists of a differential amplifier stage, which amplifies the voltage difference between the two input terminals. In common signal components, that is, when there is no potential difference between the two input terminals and a signal of the same polarity as input, it is not amplified because there is no difference between the two input signals. Since the gain is insufficient with only the differential amplifier circuit, the open loop gain of the op amp is further increased through a gain stage. The op amp output stage uses a push pull type so that its characteristics do not change depending on the load connected to the output terminal. And the comparator output stage mostly uses an open collector or open drain type to provide logic output. In a typical op amp, a phase compensation capacitor is configured in the gain stage to prevent oscillation. The op amp circuit operates in a negative feedback configuration. And in the high frequency band, if the output is in minus phase, that is, inverted by 180 degrees, it becomes positive feedback and oscillates. Therefore, the phase compensation capacitance is added to the gain stage inside the op amp to prevent oscillation. Positive feedback is a structure that continuously adds the output to the input and amplifies it, which causes oscillation. On the other hand, the comparator has a circuit configuration almost identical to that of an op amp, but it does not use negative feedback and is used in an open loop. So it does not have a built-in phase compensation capacitor to prevent oscillation. Since the phase compensation capacitor limits the operating speed between input and output, the response time of the comparator is much faster than that of the op amp. If you look at the actual internal circuit of the op amp and comparator, the input stage consists of a differential amplifier stage, which amplifies the voltage difference between the plus and minus input terminals. The next stage, the gain stage, further increases the open loop gain. Here, we can see that the op amp has a phase compensation capacitor configured between the gain stage input and output to prevent oscillation, and that the comparator is not applied. 
The op-amp output stage uses a push-pull type and the comparator uses an open collector. Let's take a look at the main parameters of the op-amp. The op-amp has the characteristics of high input impedance and low output impedance. The input impedance refers to the impedance facing the input terminal of the op amp and is several megahertz or more. The output impedance refers to the impedance facing the output terminal of the op amp and is several tens of ohms or less. In analog, it is ideal for all signal processing blocks such as amplifiers, buffers, and filters to have infinite input impedance and zero output impedance. If the input impedance is low, it interacts with the output impedance of the previous circuit, causing signal attenuation due to voltage division, so 100% of the signal cannot be received. If the output impedance is high, it interacts with the input impedance of the circuit connected to the next stage, causing signal attenuation due to voltage division. The open loop gain of the op amp is very high. A typical op amp is about 100,000 times, or about 100 decibels. And since the covered frequency band cannot be infinitely high, it maintains a certain level of amplification and drops to minus 20 decibels decade. As the gain increases, the frequency band decreases inversely. This is due to the effect of the capacitance within the internal circuit of the op amp. The open loop gain of the op amp is very high, but it drops linearly to minus 20 decibels decade in the high frequency band. In fact, the amplifier circuit that uses the op amp is not used in the open loop state, but is used by applying negative feedback between the output stage and the minus input. The gain in this state where the feedback is applied is called the closed loop gain. As shown in the graph, if the gain of the negative feedback op-amp circuit is 40 decibels, i.e. 100 times, the coverage band is reduced to a frequency band of around 10 kHz. This indicator of the cover frequency band for the gain of the op-amp is called the gain bandwidth product, GBW or GBP. When the open loop gain is 100 decibels, the minus 3 decibels point is 10 Hz. So the gain bandwidth product is the gain value, 10 to the 5th power times the bandwidth, 10 Hz, which is 10 to the 6th power, or 1 MHz. Therefore, GBW is 1 MHz. If you look at the frequency band when the gain of the op amp on the graph is 0 dB, that is, when the gain is 1, it is 1 MHz. In this case, if you multiply the gain bandwidth value, 1, by the bandwidth, 1 MHz, you will also get 1 MHz. This value is called unity gain bandwidth because it is the frequency band for unity gain. Therefore, you can see that the GBW value and unity gain bandwidth are the same value. Each op amp has its own unique GBW value, and when the gain is high, the covered frequency band decreases, and when the gain is low, the covered frequency band widens. An op amp with a very large GBW is called a wideband op amp. When designing an op amp amplifier, the gain of the amplifier to be designed and the frequency of the applied signal should be considered together based on this GBW, and when designing an amplifier circuit with high gain, a cascade structure that uses multiple op amp amplifier stages in series is to secure the copper frequency bandwidth. Slew rate is a parameter that indicates the operating speed of an op amp. In other words, it is defined as the output voltage change value for one microsecond, which is a standard for how quickly the output changes for an ideal square wave input with steep turn on and turn off. For example, if the slew rate is one volt per microsecond, it means that for a square wave input, the output voltage changes by 1 volt over a period of 1 microsecond. Therefore, the higher the slew rate value, the faster the speed characteristic. The relationship between GBW and slew rate above can be divided into wideband and high speed, and the consideration points vary depending on the application. For general small signal signal amplification, 
GBW is important, and for somewhat large signal control signal processing, slew rate is the main consideration. Op amps can be divided into dual supply op amps and single supply op amps depending on the power supply method. And can be classified as rail to rail op amps whose output signal has a full swing within the power supply range. A typical op amp cannot achieve a full swing across the power supply voltage range due to its internal circuit and output stage push pull circuit structure and outputs within a range that is approximately 1.5 volts lower than the power supply. In other words, the output will be 1.5 volts lower than VCC and 1.5 volts higher than V. So a design that takes this into account is required. Dual power supply method is the most classic and common type, and since it is difficult to configure the negative power supply, the single power supply method is widely applied, but fundamentally, a dual power supply op amp can also be used with a single power supply depending on the biasing method. As power saving has become important recently, the number of circuits that operate at low voltages has increased, and op amps also need to operate at low voltages. However, when the VCC voltage drops to 3.3 volts, single supply op amps were limited to input and output only in a voltage range that was 1.5 volts lower than VCC. But rail to rail op amps that perform full swing from the supply power VCC to the V range have emerged. Such op amps that can be applied even under low voltage conditions are also called full swing op amps. And depending on the input circuit method, it is classified into three types, bipolar, JFET, and CMOS. The bipolar type has a current drive structure at the input stage. So the input current is somewhat large, while the JFET and CMOS types have voltage drive at the input stage, so the input current is very small. Depending on the performance and application of the op amp, it is also classified into low noise type, high speed type, precision instrument type, and high power type. Depending on the package, there are various types, such as dip type, SMD type, and high power type with heat sink. Thank you. Bye.